Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius, and this is... Sunil. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23 or 22, but who's counting? On today, episode seven, we're going to talk about our love story, man, how we met. You know what I'm saying? The, the growth we came through as kids to young adults and to old people now. She might not agree to be old, but she be up there. I'm not old. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... We gonna start it off, man. Um, it was a nice sunny day in Pomona, California. The sun was out, the birds was chirping, and Sunia came out from Paula Mars with her volleyball suit on, and nice. I was like, "Damn, who's that?" Okay, Sunia, tell the story. What? Here she go with the yawning. So, dang, that was so long ago. Yes, it was what. I want to say, because I went to high school in 94, so I'm going to say like 93. That was 93. 93. Yeah. So basically, our relationship was built on a lie. My sister, it was. she lied and said I wanted to, she wanted to talk to me, told her she wanted to talk Let to me. Let me tell the story. You're not even telling it right. Well, tell the story, because my, so, my story more juicier. Yeah, I bet. And she keeps going. It, so, I mean, it's everything. I think that's her signature move, the yarn. I should just put that on one of the buttons. So, his Paula sister was in the seventh grade. I was in the eighth grade. Shout this, we both went to Paula Mars, but I never seen her because she was a nobody. But um, let's get that straight. She was boy. watching me. She was watching my homeboy Jacoby. Shout out to Jacoby with that Jerry Crow man. Jacoby if it wasn't, story. if it wasn't for you, she would have never noticed me. No, I never noticed you. <laughs> period. And this is what's so funny. We went to the same middle school, and I when I tell you, I never seen this dude at school. Like I never seen him. Which I was is, low key. You know what I'm saying? I was one. Of I don't know how key low players. key he was because I used to see his friend, and he kicked it with every day. And I never seen him before. Didn't y'all have the same lunch? Yeah, we had the same lunch. I we never seen That's him. That's how smooth I was. I stayed. Off the no, ride. you just wasn't on my radar. I never seen him before. So his sister. So when he transitions to high school, his sister comes to. Um, Palomar's Middle School. She's in the seventh. I'm in the eighth. So she ends up liking my um, cousin. And so they're talking or whatever. So she couldn't have boys call her phone. And because she couldn't have boys calling in the house, I would basically call and then. And flirt with me. Okay. I would actually call and ask to speak to her. And then I would give my cousin the phone. And so, talking about is, is uh, Natasha there? Yeah, okay. She used to have this deep raspy voice. I still got a deep raspy <laughs> voice. I've learned to embrace it. It is what it is. My voice is powerful. Can't you tell? Um. So, anyways, he basically would um put her on or whoever would put her on the phone. Cause you didn't always answer the phone. Oh, we, y'all count how many yawns <laughs> you do on the show, please. Count how many yawns because this is very rude. Okay, so his sister end up lying and telling him that I wanted to meet him and telling me that he wanted to meet me. So he comes to my middle school, which is true. Um, he comes after volleyball practice. I think I had the brown, my brown dicky suit on. You did. You know what I'm saying? He comes to my volleyball practice afterwards. And then we're both under the impression that the other person wants to meet the other person. Yeah, so that was very awkward. Huh? I don't even know what I, I said. I don't even think it was I, awkward. I just think we both. I just seemed like, damn. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we <laughs> both basically was thinking. So we, I think we just start conversing. And I think we just kind of hit it off. Because I don't even think we found out that she was lying to after the fact. Like, it was like, oh, because I don't think we ever discussed it to, way after the fact. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I didn't want to meet you. And it was like, I was like, so... It was the greatest lie she ever told. I will and say she that. she told a whole lot of lies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Oh, shit. But that was the, the greatest lie she ever told because it led to us being in a relationship. Yes. And um, and basically, the drama came in. She was forbidden. Um, my mom didn't want me talking to her. You know what I'm saying? So the, the same drama. person that basically brought us together was trying to tear us apart. So when I was younger in school, I was always popular. I had a best friend, but I've always had multiple groups of friends. Like, so I was the type of person, like, 
say my best friend and I were always together, but I may we may kick it with this group today, this group tomorrow, because I was cool with a lot of different people, even if they didn't get along. And so once I start dating him, she kind of felt like um, I don't even say what was he dating. What were you just talking? We was going. We was we was official. Oh, okay. Um, don't even try to play me. <laughs> don't even try to, wait a minute. Are you serious? No, because I, I don't know if we, that's because I'm thinking we, because this was before you ran off to Georgia. We were going. We were actually going. So together. we broke up and you left. No. Yeah, we, no, we, we wait. No, when I left, we kind of, no, I think we broke up right before I left. But, yeah, we were actually, at this time, we were actually, remember, because I was actually sending notes to you, writing you letters, you were writing me. We were actually in a for real okay. relationship. Um, So a sister basically felt like, oh, you know, because you're with my brother, that I'm supposed to hang with her all the time. And I'm like, I've always been a leader. I've never been the type like, oh, I'm with your brother. I'm going to uh, kiss your butt. And be, no, I don't care about none of that. But the crazy thing is, when I first start dating him, he was like, oh, you shouldn't kick it with my sister. She's going to cause a lot of drama. But the crazy thing is, a lot of people were already telling me that. So before I even met him, nobody liked his sister. And I would feel bad for him. I'm always for the underdog, always. So... I was like, dang, why don't nobody like this girl? Like, she's really pretty. You know, she seems like she's a good person. But all my, like, friend's little sisters was the, her age. Like, hey, she's drama. Don't talk to her. But I've always been the type of person, too, to get to know people for myself. So she hadn't given me any of these signs yet. So, and then she would be by herself, so oh, I felt look, bad for her. Not to cut you off, but this craziest episode seven, we telling our love story because of, our you know, pager page codes for seven. seven. That is that funny. Was, is this it seven? Was, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Go that ahead. is crazy. So anyways, he tells me like, so he starts telling me everything everybody else is telling me. So I'm like, hey, because I'm a loyal person. I'm like, look, I've known your sister before I even knew you. So I'm not going to stop talking to your sister now that I'm with you. I just I already knew where it was going. I already knew. But I just kind of felt like what type of person to get with somebody's brother and then just stopped. Like, I knew knew her before I even knew who, that you existed. So I was like, I'm not going to do that. So she had got start getting jealous of my friendships with other people because she wanted to be my best friend. So she tells him that I kissed my ex-boyfriend. So he comes to me. He's like, hey, I know she's lying. This is what she does. This, that, that, and this. Still give her a pass. Like, okay. Then. Hold on, because I was probably being dumb and naive and shit. Did you kiss a nigga? No. Okay, because I probably never asked. You know what I'm saying? You didn't ask. gave you the benefit of doubt and shit. You gave me the benefit of doubt because you know me. Man, I was simping that damn shit. So then um, she just starts starting a bunch of drama with my name in it. And um, I confronted her. To make a long story short, she was way smaller than me. I was a fighter back then, would never have put my hands on her. She was too little. I was going to have my cousin fight her. She has her mom, comes up to the school, and then it just erupts from there. Then he was forbidden to talk to me. Yes, and you, if you know me, you can't tell me shit because I'm going to do the opposite just because you told me. You know what I'm saying? I have a bad problem with that. I think I still do that for this day. A problem with authority, yes. So yeah. he's forbidden to talk to me. He can't talk to me. Um, I'm still, at that time, I'm still in the eighth grade. But I end up moving. She and ran off to Georgia. I ran off. I left. I moved. I moved to Georgia. Then she started fucking with this nigga named Carlos. Why are you going to say What? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nigga, you motherfucker. <laughs> so I got. I was talking to other people. Then Why would you do? even say that? Like, I don't even understand it. Then she comes back. So I come back. Was it like a, it's over the summer? But I you, come what? back the summer before, like right before school started, freshman year. And him and my cousin, the same cousin that was talking Shout to his sister. To Kenneth. They talking to the same girl. So my cousin calls his girlfriend and Demetrius answers the phone. So they talking to the same person. So Demetrius starts basically at his girlfriend's house. Or that wasn't my girlfriend. Let's get that right. Well, what was the, the situation? A random hole around the neighborhood. Come on. Wow. Oh, that girl, it probably was Kenny's girlfriend. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't my girlfriend. 
Whatever. <laughs> Don't play my Shout out, Kenny, if that's probably your girlfriend. So, anyways, <laughs> he starts asking my cousin where I'm at. Whatever conversation they happen, he told him I was back from Georgia, whatever. He pops up at my house. This dude, so he pops up at my house. And she liked what she seen and it was back on again. No, nah, he was, yeah, he had that. When I first met him, he was super light. Then the second time I saw him, he had like this. I had that summer bronze. Because I was like, really oh, not hey, you know what? attracted I was, to I was, him at I first. I was working in the sun. I, he was, I was like, doing really landscaping. Light. I was doing landscaping. And you know I was saying? like, uh. But then when I came back, he had like a tan. I was like. Yeah, okay. So Kenny mm-hmm. got to have his girlfriend back and I can continue my relationship. I don't think he talked to her like that. I don't I mean, I think they talked, but it never went like that. Um, I'm gonna ask him to remember that too. Anyways, I saw I was like, "Okay, okay. My cousin had already put me up on game and told me he had talked to him whatever, but I still wasn't tripping off him, you know. Like I could think when you a kid it's like well, it's like, "Okay, this is my bo-. but we wasn't deep seriously yet." that serious when I left that I would have been like, oh, it like was when like, you left to Georgia. Yeah. We was, we was in a relationship. How could you leave Georgia? She would go talk to a whole other nigga in Georgia. But what I'm saying is we was in a relationship before I left, but it wasn't to the point where I was like, Oh, I'm in love with this person. Yeah. So anyways, he's at my door and this dude, I'm trying to get in this dude. Oh, my God. So, my dad was a pastor. He's a pastor. So, they was at, like, this retreat. I knew nobody was home. Yeah, they was at a retreat with all the youth. And I don't know why I, me and my cousin, because both of our parents were pastors. I don't know why they let us stay home, because it was actually a youth retreat, and we didn't go. And he, my cousin answers the door. He walks right in my house and goes straight upstairs and like, show me your room. And the only thing I could think, if my dad, my dad was the type, like, a, a FBI agent, I promise. Like, we used to think he had the neighbors spying on us. And I'm like, if my dad pull up or somebody tell him you in my house, like, I don't know what he's going to do. So I'm just like, he like, come upstairs. I'm like, nah, like, you don't need to see my room. <laughs> so he's in my room upstairs calling me to come up there. But I never go upstairs. I'm standing at the door because really – I want him to get out my house because I'm just thinking my dad is going to pull up at any time. Yeah, I was very aggressive. I was like, dude, it's not ha-. like for one, I knew what he was doing. For two, I wasn't that was even way past my mind because my only thought was if my dad pull up to this house, like, oh, my God, it's going to be all bad. So you end up leaving. You end up leaving that summer. So that's how we reconnected. Uh, did we even get back together that day? I don't even remember. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? We, we was talking. We had them long night, night talking on the phone and all that stuff. Um, then we, uh, look, because I don't know if that was what, freshman, summer freshman? I that was, was freshman. you was a sophomore. You was going into sophomore year. I was going into my freshman year. So we didn't, you didn't even start the high school yet. Uh-uh. Uh, so you was about to start the high school. So, yeah, we was, um, we was just talking, moving on forward. But fast forward, rewind. So basically, she was uh, she was forbidden. So that kept. I think that was a really a key point in our relationship because I wasn't allowed to talk to her. So I was being the what they call that um, rebellious rebellious teen, and then that made that made me want to talk to her even more. So you know what I'm saying? And I think that where we built our bond and and all that because if I think if I was allowed to talk to you, I don't, I don't even think I would talk to you. You know what I'm saying? I doubt it. Because when you were allowed to talk to me, you talked to me all the time. I mean, that was after the point. After I I got to know you. The reason why I think you you still, no, I'm saying like before the situation with your sister and your mom happened, we talked all the time. Me leaving to Georgia is what basically made us stop talking. That's what I'm saying. When you came, I don't even think I would fuck with you. Like you moved on, shit. Like, but you didn't even know that at that point. Probably not, but shit. I doubt it. You, you, you trying to play it up? I doubt it. Who knows? But we never know. But the point is, she wouldn't give it up. It took it took two years to give it up, and I think that's just, this is the whole two years while I'm trying to get this is where I fell in love with. You know what I'm saying? Because she was hard. 
and I got to know her, who she was, and we you built. You was running game. Built, I, like, I tried everything in the books. I'm telling you, I tried stuff that I know it worked because it worked on the other ones. So I, I'm trying everything. It's just like, damn, she ain't budging. You know what I'm saying? Every little trick. I mean, <laughs> she wouldn't budge at all. But I, all this, we built, uh, we built something special. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, that right there was that strong bond that we built that you can't take away. You know what I'm saying? I think it was the conversations, and I'm still big on this. I even try to teach my daughters this. Well, our oldest, she's been in a relationship with him since she was like in what, senior year of high school. But I really believe in like preserving yourself and getting to know somebody. And I always thought that at an early age, like because I knew what he was trying to do, and it's like it's not gonna happen. Like even though we were real, this is the thing too. Why I think we lasted so long because we were actually friends. This dude would say the brutal, honest truth. And I had never met a dude that would be just so real and uncensored to where I'd be like, did he just say that? But it was so, it was like refreshing to hear somebody just be straight to the point and be up front. Like, he would say straight out what he was doing. And it's like, dude, yeah, it's not going to happen. It wasn't any manipulative tactics to where we could talk about, I mean, anything like real genuine conversations and by doing that like I obtained a friend so it wasn't just my boyfriend so we would be together all the freaking time like to the point where his best friend got jealous because he felt like I was taking his best friend. Yeah, yeah he got to telling lies. Well, he wasn't telling lies. He was trying to expose everything I was doing. Oh, they was, they was telling him. I was like, damn, is she psychic or some shit? No, but like, some stuff I did know, know. All the shit I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Some stuff I did know. Like, some stuff, though, like, he, okay. I remember before we was even deep, deep in love, he was just out of nowhere, like, oh, yeah, boo. I'm like, don't call me that. He was like, why? I said, because that's what you call everybody. Like, I just. I use, yeah, I use um, they call it words of endearment because you forget people's names. So you yeah, call I'm boo, like, babe. dude, huh? like, so the stuff that he was doing, like, I was so. And, okay, so with my mom's kids, I'm the youngest of four. You know, I had an older brother. He passed away when I was 12, so rest in peace to my brother. But then I also have little sisters and I have an older sister from my dad. But it's like, I've like, you're not trying, you're not running game how you think you are. It's like, dude, I'm not the one. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't take the game. But even, st- even in a sense that it was a lot of but stuff. But she had help because niggas was telling her. No, 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 no. But it was still a lot of stuff that I knew on my own because it's just the way you move and the stuff. Like, I'm not dumb. You know what I mean? And he'll even tell you now, I really have a good sense of care. I have a, the gift of discernment. I yeah, really can could read put some people shit together I without know. even sometimes I don't even be knowing like, how did I even know that? Like it'll trip me out. So a lot of stuff I already knew, but some stuff his friends were telling me, but it was like, to me, a person can walk up and this is the, the dead honest truth. And just by a certain look, it'll tell me a certain thing about this person. And they don't even have to say anything. So a lot of times, he was like, oh, so I'm like, no, nobody told me this. Like, it's God showing me who you are. You're not playing me. So with that being said, because of all that, we end up creating a bond that was just, like, unbreakable. So then it was like, his friends didn't want us together. Well, a friend. He did not want us together. He was hot. Yeah. Um, rest in peace to him too. Like shit, everybody died around in our love story, huh? Shit. Rest yeah. in peace to I my sister. I thought he would have still been around. Like, shit. But um, yeah, we we hung out, chilled out. The niggas on her block didn't like me. You know what I'm saying? Because they wanted her, and I guess they felt like I was in the way. You know, so they was keep telling her they're gonna cut my ponytail off and all that. And then as soon as I hit the block, and everybody's got the smiling faces on. <laughs> no, they didn't like you. Oh, like they would shit. never say it to him, <laughs> but they did not like him. And most of it was because some of them liked me, but they did not like him at all. And anything they could tell, oh, yeah, I had to they, beat her neighbor up because he was telling, like, nigga, mind your business. No, nah, that was my homeboy, though. And I really felt bad for that. Like, that was genuinely, like, we was really cool, like, for real. We was We was really cool. 
Mm-mm. So um, basically, um, so she got pregnant, I, which I was doing it on purpose. And the funny how how it, was, it all came happen. We was broken up at this time. So she, you know, what I'm saying the typical um, teenage movie and shit. The girl call you up when you broke up. I did up. not call you. Oh, I'm pregnant. I did like, not what? call you. What? I did not call what, you. You text me. You page me. No. We, had this. we was at the. So basically, y'all was coming. Okay. So y'all was going from oh, Wheeler Park. Park. Well, no, 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 no. Y'all was going from the park, and I was coming to the. And I had told him. And he thought I was lying, but I really was. I was dead I was, serious. She was trying to get me back. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I was talking to a whole other dude, Jeez, and we're going to bring that up. She's talking to him. Check this out. It's not I'm that out I was here talking being that that guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like she I wasn't here. having sex with anybody. I was talking, and I've never been dumb to where you're talking to people, and I'm like, yeah, no. I but wasn't never talking to people though. Let's get that right. You were talking to multiple people. So did you think I was just gonna sit around and wait on you because we was broken up? But anyways, so I was t- talking to somebody else. I saw him, and so of course I missed my menstrual. And honestly, I was scared, and so I was telling him because it was like it was like July. No, it was August because back then we went back to school in September, and at that point I had missed July and August. And so I knew. So I was like, dang. So I honestly, I didn't want to tell him because we had but broke she, up. She wanted me back, though. <laughs> yeah, okay. We had <laughs> broke up like at the end of July. And so I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want him to think that I was Because pre- I didn't even tell you right away. I ended up telling you, as a matter of fact, when did I tell you? Because then we went to... Um, I know you, you, house. you told me over the phone, I believe. I, ain't I for did sure. not tell you over the phone. I told I you know. in person, in my backyard, I in know. Rancho Cucamonga. I know exactly no. where I told you at. Well, shit, I don't because remember. you came. So after that, we ran into each other at the um, Wheeler Park. And you was trying to play hard. I was trying to play hard. I ain't going to lie. Like, I wanted to talk to him. But I'm like, I'm not about to say anything to him. He ain't saying Because at that point, I had beef with him. Because, like, a few days before that, my friends and I, we were at the Montclair Plaza. And so we saw him. And he was, him and his friends was with these girls. And so my friend was calling him. He going to try to (laughs) act like he didn't hear her calling him. So what he did was ditch the girl, come around outside of the mall, and try to come back and start start (laughs) trying to call me. I completely ignored him. And as a matter of fact, that's the day I met the dude. Because at first, I really wasn't tripping off no dudes because we was, like, broken up. But when I saw that, and that dude asked me for my number that day at the mall, I'm like, 100% I'm giving him. So that was, like, the motivation why I even gave that dude my Mm -hmm. number. She tried to go talk to a crib. Whatever. That was the motivation why I gave that dude my number that day. I'm like, dude, you really going to try to and then ditch her and come back and think, yeah, no, that no. So when I ran into him, I already had beef with him because I felt like that was completely disrespectful. I don't care who you with. Like you going to act like you don't hear her calling you to. OK, so when I saw him, and damn, that's another friend. Rest in peace too. you. Know how many people? Oh, damn, yeah. She crazy. no, I wasn't with Juanita that day, but oh. that was her sister. And she passed away, too. That was damn. like my ace. Um, it was Janetta calling you that day. Damn. And, um, dang, I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, yeah. Just had me have a little moment for a moment. Wow. So. So I ditched the girls and circled back and tried to come back and talk to you. And I ignored them and walked right into the mall and right past them like I didn't even hear them or see them. And then you got some nigga number at the mall. Some crip nigga number trying to go against the um. Go First of all, I don't even know. He keeps saying he. I don't know where he was from or any of that. Didn't care about that. Mm. Dude asked me for my number. Mm. He I was attractive. Gave him my number. But anyways, but I'm gonna be honest. That was the motivating factor when you did that. Like he's absolutely getting my number. That was the homie sister. She just mistook it out of context. Yo, that's all. That's how girls you acting do it. like I don't know his sisters. <laughs> And his sisters was way younger than us in elementary. So basically, so it was. So we ran into each other, and so we both trying to play the hard. Well, I don't even so know why you was trying to play the hard role. So we were met up at what? Kenesha so house. No, so I was ignoring you. I saw you at the park. 
I was ignoring you. And then we didn't say anything. I guess we both was feeling, you didn't say nothing to me. I didn't say anything to you. But then you went to um, Javon's grandma's house. And I remember I went over there because, yeah, now now I'm annoyed because now it's my ego. Like, you ain't going to say nothing. So, of course, I pretend like I'm going to see my homeboy, which is his cousin's, his home, his best friend's cousin because they had just had a baby. Like, I'm coming over there to see the baby. No, 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 no. I, I Okay, I got it backwards. So I went over there first. And you basically ignored me at the house. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I saw you at the park, so I had it backwards. And then you was like, can I talk to you? That's how we end up going to my cousin's <laughs> house up the street. Yeah, I had the story. I had to think about it. He was like, can I come? Can I talk to you for a minute? I'm like, yeah. So then we go to the uh, house. We talking. We chilling for two days. Well, you didn't spend a night because it sounded like two days in a row. But for two days in a row, then we didn't. So we left from there. I was at the top of my block. You, you, you paged me. So we used to page each other where we was going to meet. He paged me my address at my dad's house. So, or did I pay? I paid you my dad's address. You came up there. And so we went to my mom's hey, house. The funny thing, back in the pager days, you had all type of codes. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so I paged him my dad's address, basically my house, for him to come to my house. He came to my house, so that was two days after we hung out for two days. I never told him I was pregnant, right? Because I felt like I didn't want to say it because we were not together. So we go to my mom's house. You spend the night. Remember, you had lied and told your mom's story. You yeah, was at your friend's, friend's house, house and all yeah. this other stuff. So the day before, so the next day was school. It was a Sunday. I'll never forget. It was the day before school started. We were sitting in okay, my I back. I remember it now. Yeah, yeah I, I was sitting. That. It was in Rancho Cucamonga. We were sitting walk, on my we patio. Walked, we walked all the way to the Metrolink station. And the Metrolink yeah. didn't run on Sunday. So yeah. we sitting in my backyard, and that's when I saw we was already cool, and we had got back together. So we was sitting there talking, and we – Basically was like, okay, we're getting back together. And that's when I was like, told him. Because I didn't want to tell him to make him think like, oh, I'm only telling you this so to get back with you. So I didn't tell him till we officially got back together. So was it that was you was trying to do? What? I don't tell me so you can get back with me. I didn't tell you to after. What are you talking about? But we in your mind, you, that's what you was thinking. No, I wasn't going to tell you. to think that. I wasn't, so wasn't going to tell you at all. I wasn't. Because I didn't want you to be like, oh, you're just saying that. So I was like. But I'm little not. did she know that I was trying to get her pregnant purposely anyways. Interesting. Yeah. And I didn't she even didn't know, know that until we was yeah. adults. She didn't know that. I was, yeah. It was my plan. Because I wanted somebody on my own to love me unconditionally. And you know what I'm saying? That was something, my problem I had. So I felt like me having a baby, you know what I'm saying? That bond cannot be broken. So I told my mom on my birthday, surprise, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> that ain't even funny. Oh, uh, she was she was pissed off. Rest the peace to her too. God damn, everybody in our love story is dead. <laughs> that ain't funny. That's oh, crazy. Oh my goodness. But you know what I'm saying? Um, she was upset, you know. But um, hey, what could she do? So um, I had summer jobs, took the responsibility, provided for my baby. Went to school, rolling the baby to school in classes. We used to switch classes. You know, like my he would have her cool. for one class. I would have her for one class. You know what I'm saying? We didn't let that stop. Um, then what? Graduated, moved on. You was having your issues. I mean, that's your story to tell. I was having my issues. <laughs> I mean, she, you, you was having your I was, issues. Uh, yeah, I was going through a lot. I was going through a lot. So... I was having problems with my dad's wife at the time where I literally remember this day where I was asleep and I heard them arguing over her wanting me to leave. And I was like, what? You know, and I'm sitting there trying to play sleep. My dad trying to wake me up so he can wake me up and take me and go. I guess he was about to leave and take me. And I was like, dang. And then my mom was homeless at the time. So it was just like a whole. So just imagine just having a baby and going through all of this. So then I end up, that's when I end up getting my apartment in Long Beach, though. No, because you stayed with me for a little bit. 
Endeavor. No, 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 no. I had my apartment. Bef- wait, did I have my apartment first before? I think I am wait, let me remember. Did I have my No, you're right. So after that, I went and stayed with you, with your mom. And then, no, 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 hold on. I think I had my apartment before that. Did I? No, oh, we got the apartment. We talking about Long Beach, right? We or I? You? Ah, oh, shit, nigga. I was there. <laughs> shit. <laughs> soon no, as I graduated, no, no. You know, because soon no, as I graduated high no. school, I moved to Long Beach. No, 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 no. You, we talking about, so I had that apartment. Oh, but, Upland. No, up there, huh? I had that apartment in Long Beach, remember? Because from Long Beach, you went back to... I went back and forth catching the blue line. That was the summer before your senior year. I had Yes, yeah. yeah, so okay. I already had my apartment in Long Beach my junior year, summer year, when all that happened. Then, after all that happened, when you went to... So my sophomore year is when all that stuff was happening with my family and all that. Summer of me going into junior year is when I had the apartment. Basically, some stuff happened at the apartment. My sister bust out the windows, getting into it with her dude, basically get put out. Because I remember I was back at square A when you started to go back to school. And you was like, I think you asked your mom, like, if I can come. But they first said no. And that's when I ended up in Upland. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember all the details. Yeah, I end up going back to with my dad in Upland. Then your senior, your senior year, the day you graduated, we went to Long Beach to live with my mom. The day after grad night. Okay, that makes sense. And so we had this, the. Did did we but. Okay, yeah, we stayed um, with your mom. Then we got our own spot, right? Because we had our own spot. Cause we used to do the little photo shoots and all that shit. It wasn't at our own spot, right? No? That was at my house in Long Beach. Oh, that was before. Yeah. yeah, that was before. Okay. Well, I don't know shit. My shit is all cloudy. You know what I'm saying? In the Anthertons, when I say we stay in them apartments across the street from Ross. Okay, well, get back to the, the scenario because you're you slowing the story down. So, basically, you got pregnant. Um, we was broken up. We got back together. He told me we had the baby. Um, people was wishing, um, what was wishing bad on us, talking about I hope your baby has Down syndrome. Oh my god! And our baby came out beautiful, <laughs> like a motherfucker. And people was mad about that. People was just hating. Just uh, they was just mad. Period. That's crazy. Shout out to all y'all mad motherfuckers. Y'all probably still listening. Well, I think they was mad. The person who said that is because we, that was a whole other scenario. I don't even know why there was an issue there. But I think the biggest challenge came from your family, like basically not wanting us to be together. Yeah, but and all that, the trying to make her look at the bad guy and this and that. And yeah, that was that was a, a big sh- strain on a relationship. But a huge strain. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like 10 times over it. So, like, basically, I felt like if you, you wasn't, um, if you didn't like the person I was with, shit, you ain't got me. So, I moved on and never looked back type shit. You know what I'm saying? But then I feel like at that point, you know, so then 18, so 17, a month before my 18th birthday, you were 18, we got married. I was pregnant with our son. And then from there, I just felt like we was on, like, a grind, like, just we going to make it happen with just us. You know what I mean? And that's when you basically, well, you was always working from the time I was pregnant. But we just basically drowned out the outside noise and pretty much put. It was us. Yeah. And so that's one thing I will always say that we've always made us and our household a priority before everybody else. And I think people couldn't understand that. And people used to be mad at that. Like, oh, well, you took him away from us or you. But it was like, no, it's us. Like. This is and what we move as a unit. Like yeah, even yeah. if our kids can't come, we not there. You know what I'm saying? If we be there don't everywhere, want my mate like, there, like, yeah, we, I'm not there. If you got so, an issue with him, you got an issue with me. And the thing is, our kids was well trained, are well disciplined. You know what I'm saying? So it's like at events that wasn't no kids allowed, our kids was allowed. Oh, you know that'd what be saying? like deception. People, people was pissed off about that. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you got badass kids. You got to accept that. You know what I'm saying? But I think, like, everything that we went through when we was younger, for for sure, for me, was, like, my driving force. Like, when I got pregnant, I was like, I will not be a statistic, and I meant that. Like, I'm not going to be what I see in the hood around me. Like, 
And that was just like the driving force for me to be like, hey, like, I gotta get it. Like, I gotta go back to school because I dropped but, out. Well, let's 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 have we let's you jump back to school first. But we, we was at a point that we was about shit. Well, I know I wasn't about but shit. When? Just um, hang out and and just chill all day. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, and I think if you, I if but, I could take that back, my early twenties. I would do different because I, I miss a lot of good times. But on, we on was that. like nineteen. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I just 20. said my early twenties. You know what I'm saying? If I was really on my grind on my early twenties, I think I would have been much farther in life. But we were still in school though. We was taking class at Antelope Valley College. Yeah, but I wasn't. Really, I don't know what he was on. You know what I'm saying? But I, <laughs> I was on some whole seriously. Like even it's crazy because when I was 22, I had took these. Um, these um, headshots and my friend like 15 years later, she still had it. And she was like, Sydney, I always knew you was going to be something because even then, like in 19, I was talking about the stuff then that I'm doing now. So I always had vision. I always seen myself with greater and more. Like I didn't necessarily have the tools to know how to get it, but I knew I was not going to be another statistic. Well, I, in my story, I didn't know. So basically, my life was basically uh, so day by day survival, and just hanging out. And then I, you know, say I took classes here and there at the local community college. You know, say photography classes, trying to find find myself type shit. You know what I'm saying? But I really ain't really. Honestly, it's like I feel like I'm still searching to find myself because it's like passion is something that's passionate about. I don't know right now. So basically that was in my early twenties. But see, that was the difference between me and you too, where you were still trying to find yourself. I was super grounded in God back then. Like yeah, too grounded. That, that, super. Now that was, they get on that. That was a problem in our relationship because she, she really like God's her man and shit. Like he was, like, he look, is. That nigga ain't, that nigga ain't put no food on the plate. I want to go get this. And it's like, and that used to be my thing is like, Oh God made a way. No, I made a fucking way. You know what I'm saying? So I really took that at heart. Like, that was a real problem. Yeah, he was Just very like, lost. Don't be giving God glory when I went out there and do this and that and, and, and made it happen. Like, nah. Thank God for the transition because, yeah, you were really so He would be so mad at me because I was like, seriously, when I had my daughter at 16, and that's what I'm saying, me and him were in two different places because where I saw, like, I would never be what I didn't want to be. Like, it really changed my mindset and the way I even thought, like, my actions, everything, because and it's I like... Think, yeah, and I think you kept me grounded, because if you didn't change your lifestyle, I think I'd probably be dead in jail, you know what I'm saying? Because the ideas and the stupid things I came up with, you was like, me ain't doing that shit. Like, yeah. go sit your ass down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was on some stuff, because we, we was in the 20s. We used to walk. We used to walk everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So it's like she used to walk the kids to school and all that. And, you know what I'm saying? Niggas going to constantly get at her. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, shit, get the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Set them up and do a lick. And she was like, hell no, I ain't doing that. And this is the mindset of the things that I thought of that really was stupid. If you really sit back and think. And she was like my grounding, grounding point of re reality and not making dumb choices. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have somebody on your team that like this slap you back in your right mind, and I think if you was with it, I think you'd be in a whole different path of life. You know what I'm saying? Because I came up with a lot of dumb shit. And my thing is when I had my daughter, it was like all or nothing. Like I just knew that I had to be greater for her. And then when I had my son, it, I was just like on a whole different wave. Like I was serious about the things of God. I think I was too religious, not spiritual. Now I'm spiritual. And she got too boring. He thought Everything I was boring. Everything is like, if it wasn't church, it is like she didn't want to do it. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I, this and that. It's like. Because I'm a person of get principle. Get the hell out of here with that shit. Like, <laughs> I'm you know a person what I'm of like, principle. And it doesn't matter what I do or what I'm into. I just really believe to walk it like I talk it, and I believe that I never want to be a hypocrite. And that's not based on. But we was what eighteen years it old. Shit, you if know what I'm saying, saying like, I'm really walking this thing with God, like I'm really walking this thing with God, and I think He didn't understand that. Didn't. Like I'm serious about this. Like this ain't a game for me. 
And so I think I was overboard. Like, overboard. Like you can't smoke in the house. Overboard. You can't drink in the house. I think I was like trying to control the situation. And I was wrong looking back, but I was a kid. I was like 18, 19. I think I was like that up until like what, 25, 26? Shit, I don't know with the times. But like shit, 26. You was, you was like, you was under the, the voodoo spell. I wasn't under the voodoo <laughs> spell. I was really seriously seeking the thing. You got to understand. And tea. one day, no, one day I will write my book and tell my story. But I have been through so much, so much that it was like the only thing I could do is give God the glory. Like there's times where he ain't going. I don't know if you're going to say it or not to where I know our lives could have been going. Like we came back, the house could, and, and the, the way God set things up, how it happened, like there's no way I couldn't praise him or give him honor for the things he did. And so for him, he looked at it as God, like God is taking my time, but it was like, I could have balanced it more, but my thought was, you know, God is seeing. She made God her man in the relationship. No, that's didn't. that's the you the making perse- it sound no, and so that, weird. And no, no, and that's how I felt. And shit, you know what I'm saying? You want to run the church on Sunday? Want to run the, the the Bible study on Wednesday? You want to do the praise and worship shit and all this? Then the shit that be struggling and the shit that I make a way make shit happen. You want to give praise to God? So it's like I felt like, damn, this is you acting like this is your nigga or something like. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, I but really let's felt, put it in and that, perspective. And that was my problem. I felt like, like, hold on. Like, so how do you feel like how I feel about God now? I, I don't I don't feel like that now because I know what I do and I'm confident of what I provide and what I do. So it's like. But you also understand that God is covering us. And I understand that you understand that. <laughs> so you don't understand I mean, that? Shit, it is what it is. I'm going to argue the point with you if, that, if that's, you know what I'm saying? So you don't believe that? I believe what I believe. And what is that? If you don't get off your ass, shit ain't going to happen. No, if faith you don't without, put in the okay, works, that's not what I'm shit saying. ain't happen. That's not what I'm saying. Faith without works is dead. Now, I'm not la-la land like, oh, God is going to drop the money out of the sky. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, can you appreciate it now that me having faith and being grounded in God? Because if I wasn't doing just and you was telling me and asking me to do the stuff that you was asking me to do that could have had us potentially killed or anything else. Can you understand and respect it now? I respect you. I respect your beliefs. Now? Now. I respect your beliefs. I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say? I mean, shit. It is what it is. Because you're trying to make it seem like I was just crazy. Like, uh, and that's what I'm saying. Shit. <laughs> like, but I was crazy. To, you was in love with God. I'm still Basically, in love with God. That's, and this is what I'm saying. I was in a place of, I felt like you. that was the other nigga. That's crazy. Because that's how you made it. How? Because I'm you were so infatuated with God. It was God this, God that. God. I'm still was, infatuated with God. No, not as the time, as this time and moment or relationship. It was, it was a whole different, you know what I'm saying? You didn't, you put him on a pedestal without like basically left me down like he, I, still I, wasn't, on I wasn't shit. So you, then I guess you didn't you didn't bring give me my value. I could say at that. that time. I, I could understand you know why you could say, but God is always going to be in the forefront. Even today, God is still in the forefront. God is before you, before myself, before our kids. God is always going to be first. That's not even a conversation or a, a debate. But I, what I will say is maybe because. I didn't, well, you got to understand too, like we got married young and I didn't understand the idea of what that looked like. You know what I mean? I didn't understand. And then we grew. So you imagine like us getting, having a baby, getting married. And my mind was on some whole other stuff. I think just mentally and spiritually, we were in two total different places, obviously. Totally. And it kind of like, Played a lot of issues within our marriage. And I think like at 25, 26 is when I was like, wait a minute. Okay. I'm, I'm operating out of religion and not spirituality, but it had to get me to the place where I had a relationship with God to hear God much clearer, to understand that, you know, I'm putting a building before my marriage. I'm putting a building before my household. I'm putting a building before my family. And that's when I had to understand, like, okay, I'm doing this thing wrong. 
But I mean, she yeah, she didn't have no balance, and I mean my balance, everything revolved around the church. Like yeah, because now um, he, harvest night at the church, New on. Year's Eve at the church. It's like, damn, can I give some say so? Can we do what I want to do? Because remember, I'm not in the church. You know what I'm saying? So, but it was always her way or the highway, which caused a lot of shit in our relationship. But remember, um, dang, I forgot what I was about to say. Everything you're saying is true. I will agree to that. But I think that's a part of growth. Oh, that's what I'm about to say. You. You was looking at it like God and let, let me put something in perspective because it wasn't, it wasn't God that you were mad. You thought you were mad at God. I was serving a building in people. I wasn't serving God. And when I say that was, Oh, what I feel like what I should have been being taught is honor your marriage, put your family first, not before God, but like, okay, you over the children's ministry, you doing this, you doing that. You need, when I felt like people should have been saying, hey, if your husband is not in the church like that, it's cool to come on Sunday, but you got to spend time and put your marriage first. So even though you were saying it was God, it wasn't God. Like I was serving man. And that's when I had to realize and basically say, I'm doing this for people. God wasn't even in it. I was doing it because the pastor said, or this person said, or this and that. I'm thinking this is what a good Christian or this is what you're supposed to do. But when I got all that noise out the way and started to connect with God one-on-one and God had to show me like all of this is off because it's not even me, it's religion and I'm not religion. And that's when I, we came to terms and we was on the same page. And I think that's where we prospered at. Yeah. It's when when I basically go ahead. No, that's, I was just saying that's where we prospered at once you got rid of that religion. Yeah. And I put God in perspective. And then I think you were able to see God in a different light because it wasn't about God. I was serving man and I didn't even realize that I was. Yeah. She had the tea. I didn't have no tea. I was just really trying to be, look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a s- always say this. We got that. You said it already. Yes. I really believe in, in, in being who you say you are. I don't believe now I was being misled I was a baby in Christ. I didn't understand the fullness of it. And so I was just doing what people were saying or doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing. But in reality, God only wants you to follow him, not man. So, yeah, I screwed up. It was, it was, but I won't take it back because look at where we're at now. In love, thriving, best friends, cool relationship. I feel like I could talk to you about anything. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't change it. That's good. So we go back to we was married in what nineteen ninety nine. We got married in Long Beach, Cal State Long Beach. We did ran to Vegas and got the um certificate, came back to the ceremony in Long Beach. So do you feel like 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 when we got married, was it like something changed or it just felt the same? Let me ask you this, because I just said all this stuff, you was like Okay, or whatever you said. Are you trying to put it back on top? Like, I don't get what you're doing. No, I said, okay, shit. You want to take nothing back. What do you want me to say? I said, okay. (laughs) You want me to elaborate a whole whole spell speech? (laughs) You wouldn't take nothing back. You would go back and be that super Christian. You know what I'm saying? That under the spell, drunk the tea, hit That that part, it it hit a nerve with you. No, I mean. So we went back, we got married, you know what I'm saying? We spent our um, married, didn't have no honeymoon, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just basic. Dang, that's crazy. No budget, no nothing. Just, you know what I'm saying? It was fun, though. Why was it fun? Because we got married. Why wouldn't it be fun if we got married? Yeah, I guess it was. You know what I'm saying? It was our first and only marriage. You got married before again? Okay. So to be coming up in 25 years in a couple of years, I think it's two. I think it's two. It might be three. What is it? Two, three? Two more years? 25? Mm-hmm. So we're going to do our re-vows in 25. Renew our vows. Renew our vows since our marriage, our first marriage was just like a swap meet marriage. You know I was going to say it was, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, we pay for everything ourselves. We were young, and 
I wouldn't say it was a swap. Well, to me, it's all about, like, are you serious about the vows? Like, I was serious when I took that oath. So it wouldn't matter to me if it was in a courtroom. Well, initially it, it was. was. What yeah. are you talking about, man? Yo, we're going to wrap this up, man. That's just a taste of our love story, man. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, and stay tapped into with us. Grind face.